Have you ever wondered what's inside an atomic bomb and how exactly it works? A question that piques curiosity, yet holds an unsettling undertone. The atomic bomb, a creation of the 20th century, has left an indelible mark on global history. It has become a symbol of human ingenuity and, paradoxically, our capacity for destruction. Today, it remains as relevant, if not more so, as during the Cold War era. In this video, we'll unravel the mystery of what's inside this devastating weapon. To understand what's inside an atomic bomb, we first need to get familiar with some basics. At the core of every atom, there's a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. Around this nucleus, electrons dance in a cloud-like formation. Now, nuclear energy isn't some magical force. It's the power harnessed from the bonds within these atomic particles. The two fundamental principles at play here are nuclear fission and fusion. Fission is the process of splitting an atom's nucleus, releasing a massive amount of energy. Fusion, on the other hand, is the combination of two atomic nuclei, which also releases energy but requires extremely high temperatures to initiate. These principles aren't just abstract concepts. They're the underlying mechanisms that allow atomic bombs to unleash their devastating power. Fission bombs, like the one dropped on Hiroshima, and fusion bombs, also known as hydrogen bombs, are both products of these principles. With these basics in mind, let's delve deeper into the inner workings of an atomic bomb. Now, let's explore what happens when an atomic bomb detonates. An atomic bomb is a marvel of physics and engineering, albeit one with devastating potential. At its heart are two types of isotopes, uranium-235 or plutonium-239. These isotopes are chosen for their ability to undergo fission, a process where the nucleus of an atom splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the process. The bomb's design ensures that a sufficient amount of these isotopes are brought together to achieve what's known as a supercritical mass. This is the point where the chain reaction becomes self-sustaining, leading to an explosion. But how is this supercritical mass achieved? Enter the neutron trigger. This device, also known as initiator, is located at the core of the bomb. Its job is to emit a burst of neutrons into the surrounding isotopes to kickstart the fission process. The neutron trigger is typically made of polonium and beryllium. When these two elements are combined and compressed by conventional explosives, they release a shower of neutrons. These neutrons then collide with the nuclei of the surrounding uranium or plutonium atoms, causing them to split and release more neutrons. This is the beginning of the chain reaction. Each fission event releases around two to three additional neutrons. These neutrons then go on to cause more fission events, which release even more neutrons and so on. In less than a microsecond, this process multiplies exponentially, leading to a vast uncontrolled chain reaction. The energy released by this chain reaction is immense. Each fission event releases around 200 million electron volts of energy. To give you an idea, that's around 10 million times the energy released in a typical chemical reaction, like the burning of coal or gasoline. And it's not just energy that's being released. Each fission event also produces radioactive byproducts, including isotopes like strontium-90, cesium-137, and iodine-131. These byproducts contribute to the bomb's deadly radioactive fallout. But let's not forget the most visible part of an atomic bomb detonation, the explosion. This is caused by the rapid expansion of the superheated air and the vaporization of the bomb's materials. The resulting shock wave can level buildings, while the intense heat can ignite fires many miles away. So, there you have it. The atomic bomb is a complex machine designed to harness the immense power of nuclear fission. From the neutron trigger that starts the chain reaction to the uranium or plutonium that fuels it, every component plays a critical role in creating one of the most destructive forces known to humanity. So that's the devastating chain reaction that takes place inside an atomic bomb. The impact of an atomic bomb goes far beyond the initial explosion. The immediate aftermath is both visually striking and devastatingly destructive. The blast wave, a sphere of compressed air moving outward from the explosion's epicenter, wreaks havoc on everything in its path, obliterating buildings, toppling trees, and causing untold casualties. But the destruction doesn't stop there. The blast wave is followed by incredibly high temperatures, 
igniting fires and causing further devastation. In the heart of the explosion, temperatures can reach millions of degrees hotter than the surface of the sun. This intense heat can cause severe burns miles away from the initial explosion. Then there's the radiation. The explosion releases an enormous amount of radiation causing immediate harm to those nearby and contaminating the environment. This radiation can lead to radiation sickness, a serious illness that can cause nausea, weakness, hair loss and even death. The radiation can also cause long-term health problems, including cancer and genetic damage. But the impact of an atomic bomb doesn't end with the immediate aftermath. There's also the nuclear fallout. This term refers to the radioactive particles that are propelled into the atmosphere by the explosion, then fall back down to Earth. These particles can contaminate large areas, rendering them uninhabitable for decades, even centuries. The effects of nuclear fallout can be far-reaching and long-lasting. It can contaminate food and water supplies, harm wildlife, and cause long-term health problems for those exposed. The fallout can also spread over large distances, carried by wind and rain, affecting areas far from the explosion site. The impact of an atomic bomb is not just physical. The psychological effects can be just as devastating. The fear and trauma caused by such a catastrophic event can have lasting impacts on individuals and communities. In sum, the impact of an atomic bomb is multifaceted and far-reaching. It's a combination of immediate destruction, long-term environmental damage and psychological trauma. The effects of an atomic bomb are truly catastrophic and far-reaching. Now that we understand the destructive power of atomic bombs, it's worth considering the ethics of their use. A topic as grave and impactful as atomic bombs inevitably raises ethical implications. The balance of power, deterrence theory and the humanitarian impact are key points to ponder upon. The balance of power is an intriguing concept. It suggests that the possession of atomic bombs by nations can create a sort of equilibrium, preventing any one country from dominating others. However, it's a precarious balance, like a game of chess, where each player has the power to topple the board. Deterrence theory, on the other hand, posits that the sheer destructive potential of atomic bombs can discourage nations from engaging in warfare. But this theory sits on a double-edged sword. Yes, the fear of mutual destruction may deter conflict, but the presence of such weapons also poses a constant threat to global security. Perhaps the most heart-wrenching aspect to consider is their humanitarian impact. The immediate and long-term effects of atomic bombs on human life and the environment are devastating. Cities can be obliterated in moments, and the resulting radiation can cause suffering for generations. The use of such weapons raises questions about our responsibility to each other as humans and to the planet we inhabit. Furthermore, we must also consider the ethics of creating something with such immense destructive power. Is it ethical to invest time, resources and intellect into creating weapons that can annihilate entire cities and poison the environment for centuries? These are not easy questions to answer. They require us to examine our values, our fears, and our hopes for the future. They force us to consider the kind of world we want to live in and the kind of world we want to leave for future generations. The use of atomic bombs raises complex and profound ethical questions. These questions push us to reflect on our humanity, our capacity for destruction, and our potential for peace. They remind us that with great power comes great responsibility a responsibility that we must bear with wisdom and compassion. As we've seen, the atomic bomb is a marvel of engineering, but also a weapon of immense destruction. We've taken a deep dive into the intricate mechanics of this formidable tool, unraveling its complex inner workings, from the splitting of atoms and the chain reactions that lead to an explosive force, to the intricate design that allows for this process to occur with devastating efficiency. We've also examined the profound impact these weapons have had on our world. The immense destruction they've caused, the lives they've claimed, and the long-lasting effects on the environment and on human health. The shadows of Hiroshima and Nagasaki still linger, serving as stark reminders of the power we hold. Beyond the engineering and the impact, we've discussed the ethical considerations that surround the use of atomic bombs. The debates that question the morality of using such a destructive force, 
and the responsibilities that come with the knowledge and ability to create these weapons. It is indeed a testament to human ingenuity, a horrifying demonstration of what we're capable of when pushed by necessity, fear or ambition. But it also poses a question to us, a question about the path we choose to walk on armed with such power. Understanding the atomic bomb not only satisfies our curiosity, but also reminds us of the profound responsibilities that come with such power.